Uh, my name is Evan Lewis of Lean Transformation Office, and um, I am the Lean Transformation Business Partner, and I'm uh, happy to be here in the Gulf Coast Medical Center Strategy Room. So the way we use this room is really a system for uh, putting strategies to operations. Uh, we begin on this side here uh, with uh, having a steering team that strategically aligns to system strategies, where we talk about our mission, vision, values. Uh, we've created a charter of what this room is really all about and how those connect to our strategic initiatives for the health system as well as how Gulf Coast has their strategic initiatives that connect to those. And then it, that does include how we talk about the importance of having quality cost and experience from the patient's perspective. And that's what this room is really about uh, delivering. So the first step is to form a steering team that then identifies our connection to system strategies. The next step in the room is to then come forward and say, how do we then set goals to perform uh, and to meet the outcomes that are designed from the system and from the, st the strategies from a system perspective? And so we visually post these up in the ways that we will have great patient safety, flow, and experience. Um, we measure uh, specific KPIs, length of stay, readmission rates, ER metrics, uh, capacity utilization metrics and how this is the focus and how we'll measure how we're achieving the strategies of the health system uh, and what our goals are and where we're tracking. We meet here weekly uh, so that we understand where we stand and what it is we're going to improve and where our status is. From there we move on to identifying the value and what that means in this perspective is to identify what the steps are that we go about improving the work that we do. So from a strategic standpoint, the things that we'll work on, we then identify how we go and deliver on that strategy improvement. So we have things that happen in pre-acute, the ED, inpatient, discharge, and post-acute. And this room was designed to work on problem solving to increase flow through Gulf Coast Medical Center as a primary problem that needs to be solved. So these are the ways that we identify how and where we deliver value. Uh, from that perspective. And so this is the main patient flow through the hospital. So that's our identification of value. And then what we do next is then begin to improve the PDCA thinking and we've actually visually managed to plan, do, check, and act um, section of our wall and how we then connect improvements through PDCA thinking to specific steps in the process of patient flow. Moving on from there, when we have successful PDCA experimentation, we like to always have some piece of standard work that comes out of the experimentation. So we move on to a standardized portion of our improvement system, where we include the standard work that comes out of each one of these PDCAs visually managed and how those flow into our training plans using training timetables. At the end, we transition then to go and to have what is it that we're going to do from a daily management perspective. So we like to have a go-see schedule here, which is visually managed by days of the week and four different rows of ways that we can go see what the work is we're doing. And here we place our standard work that comes out of our improvement into our standardized area and then how will we go and see and who's going to actually go and see what it is we're doing and improving to ensure that we're sustaining and um, hardwired some of these improvements. And then we'll go huddle with the people that do the work and then coach based upon what we've seen in the standard work and how uh, there is adherence to the standard work or possibly not and how that then connects to our training plans. As we move on to the coaching area then we start to talk about what are some of the systems that we have in place here to um, try to drive the operations and how we deliver our strategy to operations. And so we identify with some of the principles that we have in here, which are aligned, enabling, and improving principles. And then what are the specified behaviors that we'd like to see from that perspective, which are documented here in our uh, operations uh, system. And then we have uh, focus leaders come and tell their story of how they've gone about and observed these particular behaviors and what the story actually tells them about their reflections and how they went about coaching. Uh, for optimal results. And then that leads back around to our steering team, which then we reevaluate how we deliver back um, the value to the patient through how we're driving strategies to operations. And the room is a cycle. 
then we reset goals, uh, how we perform to them, then how that connects to how we, how we deliver value and how we'll then improve value through PDC experimentation, more standardization, and then the enabling effect of going, seeing, huddling, and coaching, and how we then drive the ideal behaviors through systems. Uh, and so that is uh, at a high level how this room works. Do we say anything about this side? This is supportive information um, for two reasons. One, because this room is designed to help our team to manage capacity and look at quality cost patient experience. We know that we have to continue to do a gap assessment about what those opportunities are, where are we succeeding and where are there gaps, both today and because of a planned expansion pro project for Lee Health. So um, we do have a timeline um, with some uh, with a charter and um, a PDCA that's beginning to guide us on our process assessment of what are the current processes and systems that we have in place that are helping us to operationally succeed today or are absent and that we need in order to drive operational excellence both today and when we double the size of this campus to support our health system. So this is futuristic work, although it has already started um, to be built and designed, and it really does complement the overall work that we're doing. And then below that is detail about what we're doing as far as our hospital-associated infections. Um, we do cover that as part of our important quality work in this room, but you know we have lots of data to post on that, so we have that there. And last but not least, there is a celebration wall as well. Um, we talk a lot about our celebrations. Um, we do have some more things that we can post there and more opportunity, but that's part of it as well because that's where the team, the interdisciplinary team, comes together each week, and they are huddling together as a leadership team to be able to solve some of our toughest challenges, but with that, they get a chance to come together and recognize the great work that they're doing and the progress that they're making. And I think that speaks to um, how this, why it's so important to come together each week, because as a leadership team, especially in you know, acute care hospital operations, you know, we're doing um, difficult work, mm -hmm. um, and to, for patients, you know, other human beings, that really matter. So, yeah. um, Great. Edit that last one. Oh, that's fine. <laughs> would, would you like to share any of the things you've learned about what it takes to put together a system like this that um, maybe advice to others or surprises or things you've learned along the way? You want me to start with all Yeah, playing. sure. <laughs> well, the first thing I've seen is definitely you have to have committed leadership who are deep lean thinkers that really internalize the 12 principles, understand them deeply and then can actually teach their staff um, and that the lean department or whatever internal consulting group can then be those consultants that partner with the leader. Um, that's the key first point and so I'm lucky to have Holly here uh, to work with. Um, the other thing is that it's, for instance, we built a model here that we call the wheel, but it has to be something that the leader can put their fingerprints on and say I helped design this. It can be something that the lean team and uh, management can, should be doing together is then it's of the people who are doing the work here and that's a critical thing. Um, I think that then just understanding that with that partnership it's going to take years and to build it piece by piece um, and that's why I've been lucky to have Holly here for I think a year and a half now just to get to this point and if you look at it we're just now really building systems to drive the ideal behaviors we've been talking about. It's really been a visual management process, a problem solving process for delivering strategy to operations. But how you get the, that delivery down to the staff is really about how we show up on a day to day basis, which is those behaviors. And so how do we then build aligning, enabling, and improving systems to drive those behaviors, really how you drop the strategy into the operational area. And this just represents the visual problem solving portion of it. Mm -hmm. It's the part you don't see that takes the time to build. And so the coaching to get to that point from a leadership perspective where the team as a whole can now execute these types of behaviors. Great. I don't know if you have something to you, Holly. No, that was perfect. Um, you know, what was important for me when Evan and I were designing this room, taking our system model and then figuring out how do we support that at the local facility level was to create that wheel and that model. For me, I needed to see some integration between our regulatory requirements and the things that we needed to do from a 
quality standards standpoint to be an acute care hospital. I needed to see some connection between the process improvement work that we already had underway within our quality councils, um, within our lean management system, but then also the, the people side of it. Um, you have your key performance indicators, but you have these key behavioral indicators. And in order to really do this well, you have to have synergy between them, and I think that's how the wheel provides a visual example of how we're doing that and operationalizing that um, within our campus. Um, you have to be incredibly patient with your team. This is not an initiative. You can just flip the switch and say, here we go. You have to meet people where they're at. You have to meet people where they're at. You have to be incredibly patient. You need to start with people who are most excited and most curious about it and really are pulling you to be part of it. And then you build momentum from there, and it has been a year and a half journey. Um, it is our goal by the end of this fiscal year to have all of our leaders fully deployed with this. And, um, and, and how we have no evidence of that is Evan and I go out about every six months and we go into the GEMBA with our leaders to actually see their processes in action um, and to do it in a very supportive way. That's our way to coach them at the elbow and to see where they're successful, where they have questions, and then to prompt them on how can they stretch and now take the next step. So as we're out there doing the huddle boards now, we see really good evidence that there's huddle boards that mirror this room and mirror what Lee Health is trying to drive. We see a very good adoption of leader standard work, but we are still doing some coaching in order to either mature that standard work or if that was a missing people piece for our leaders to help them assure that up, and we're seeing success with that. But then to stretch them further to expand their interdisciplinary team. So an example would be the nursing units. Maybe they're very strong with their nursing team, but maybe they haven't yet invited in other inter interdisciplinary team members or perhaps physicians. As we're evolving as a Lee Health system and we want to partner with our physicians, why would we not want to mm -hmm. then include that? So it's just asking questions and prompting them. Um, and once again, meeting people where they're at, giving them lots of positive support. And I think that goes back to the, the key behavioral indicators and why we've really invested in the leadership development as well as the natural leadership to give that supportive foundation for to build the competencies and the skills and the understanding that leaders need to be very successful at at making this part of the reality. I think the natural leadership creates a mindset that helps then our leaders um, just have an appropriate focus for how to do this well, but to do it in the course of their reality. Mm -hmm. um, you know, that's always the gap, right? We can have plans, we can have great ideas about what should be done, but you have to then figure out how to, to make it match that reality as well and to help the leaders feel um, like it's th that they have psychological safety to test and experiment mm -hmm. and see how that's going to work. At the same time, learn the methodology and um, to have that in place because you do need structure and processes in order to guide this work um, in order to get reliable um, improvement and to sustain outcomes. And that's the journey that we're on. Um, I don't think you ever arrive with this mm -hmm. whatsoever. You, uh, you know, your organizations are dynamic and you have to just keep continuing to move that forward. But I, th I think one of the, um, the, the interesting things is in all the time we've been developing this and using this with our team, it's sticking. It's the leaders, their engagement each week. Um, they are genuinely, authentically partnering together, and they're very proud of the work that they're doing, the problems they're solving in this room, and I think they feel like they have more support than they ever have in order to accomplish that. So we just need to continue to, to move forward um, and um, ensure all our leaders can feel like this has value for them, and then inherently then that helps our organization and our whole system. Great, thanks.